Expand your vocabulary with our core 2000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Hindi ebook before it's gone. Hi. Welcome to Introduction to Hindi. My name is Alicia and I'm joined by Hi everyone. I'm Venus. In this series, you will learn everything you need to know to get started learning Hindi. That's right. And we're here to help guide you through your journey. In this lesson, you'll learn the reasons why you should start learning a new language, why you should specifically learn Hindi, and how to get started. There are countless reasons, but perhaps the biggest one of all is that it could actually change your life. Learning a new language unlocks new pathways that are off limits to you now. There are certain things that you simply cannot do without having the technical or cultural skills that come from learning a new language, like working or living in another country. Knowing another language provides you with greater job opportunities. You have the freedom to move to another country halfway around the world and earn a living, or better yet, build a career from it instead of just being stuck in one place. Language allows you to visit or live in places that you may never have even considered going. Knowing another language simply gives you more options to choose from. And learning a new language also helps you to be more open-minded and see the world from a new perspective. Language and culture go hand in hand. The world is a big place, and by broadening your understanding of other cultures, it allows you to be more empathetic and understanding of the many different ways that people live their lives. With language, you're able to see and experience more, which helps you grow as a person. Learning a new language also improves your memory. Studies have consistently shown that those who study another language have improved memory as opposed to those who didn't. Learning another language also keeps your brain healthy by significantly delaying the onset of Alzheimer's and dementia. This difference can mean as much as 4 to 5 more years of quality life. And those are just some of the reasons you should learn another language. The list just goes on and on. Now you know the benefits of studying another language, but why should you learn Hindi in particular? If your next holiday destination is India, learning a little bit of Hindi can be quite handy. Yes, Hindi is the main language of India, and if you're planning to travel to the country for pleasure or business purposes, a little bit of knowledge of the language can help make things easier for you. India is a country known for its wildlife, its art, its monuments, and its rich culture and traditions. And don't forget the delicious food. Yes, you can enjoy a variety of cuisines as you travel from one region to another. And don't assume that just because India has a large number of English speakers, you will be able to move around in the country with no knowledge of Hindi. You're absolutely right. Recent surveys have indicated that India has the second largest number of English speakers in the world, second to only the United States of America. But the percentage of English speakers is still quite low at just 12%. This means while you'll encounter many people who can easily have a conversation with you in English, you will require some knowledge of Hindi while taking a taxi or an auto rickshaw or a bus. The knowledge of Hindi will also help you when you want to bargain and get the best possible price for the gorgeous saris and stoles or the beautiful artifacts. It could also help you handle an emergency situation easily. Definitely. Hopefully you won't have an emergency. but it is always a good idea to be prepared. If you know the language, you'll be able to interact more easily with the locals. Indians open their hearts and their homes to every visitor. Atithi Devo Bhava. That means guests are like god, and large-hearted Indians are known to welcome every guest with delicious foods and drinks, and so much love that you can't help but leave their homes with an experience to remember for a lifetime. So if India attracts you, get started by learning Hindi. But how can you actually do that? It is best to start with a few Hindi words and then build up from there. To begin with, there are many English words that are commonly used in India and by Hindi speaking natives. Yes, for example, you will see the people are likely to use the English please rather than the Hindi kripya in spoken language. 
Yes, but in written language, the Hindi word is used and not the English word. But we don't have to worry about the written script as of now. To begin with, we will be using romanization to learn a few Hindi words. Can you give us more examples of English words that are commonly used and understood in Hindi-speaking areas of India? Yes, natives will easily understand a thank you or a good boy or a good morning and good evening. Or even a train or a bus. Or even an office or computer or help or welcome. So that makes things a lot easier for a traveler. But let's get started with some Hindi words that you can easily learn. Let's begin with a greeting. Sure, like we said, you could easily say a hello, but you will love the smile on your host's face when you greet them with folded hands and say namaste. Namaste. Now you try. Fold your hands and say namaste. Namaste. You can also use namaste to say goodbye. Oh, that's so useful. What about thank you in Hindi? You say dhanyavad. Dhanyavad. Now you try. Dhanyavad. Dhanyavad. So, how about we do a summary of the three words we learned in Hindi? Hello is namaste. Thank you is dhanyavad. And goodbye is namaste. We also learn the Hindi word for please, although we may not use it while speaking the language. Please is kripya. We learned a lot of things about India and Hindi in this lesson. We learned how learning a new language can help you expand your horizons and meet new people. It can help make travel and business easier for you when in India. We also learned that there are a few English words we can use with the natives too. Of course, we also learned how to say hello and thank you in Hindi. We also learned the Hindi word for please, although we know that we should be using the Hindi word for please only in written language and not in spoken language. In the next lesson, we're going to learn a few things about Hindi pronunciation, so don't forget to join us. See you in the next lesson. Bye! Dhanyavad and Namaste! Welcome to Introduction to Hindi. My name is Alicia and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Venus. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Hindi pronunciation. Just like English, Hindi also has consonants and vowels. Hindi has 33 main consonants and 11 vowels. If you learn the sounds of these consonants and vowels, you'll be able to pronounce every single word in Hindi. There are also two additional consonants and two additional vowels, as well as few conjuncts. But you don't have to worry about them right now. Yes, because once you're comfortable with the 33 main consonants and the 11 vowels, the rest will come pretty easily. It may seem like a difficult task, but actually you already know many of these sounds in English. So, how about we first take a look at some of the consonants in Hindi? Yes, let's begin with some unaspirated consonants along with their aspirated counterparts. We won't be working on the consonants in the order they occur in the Hindi alphabet system simply because some of them are more commonly used than others. We'll take a look at these in order when we get to the lesson on writing. Hindi consonants are known as Vyanjan. Yes. You're already familiar with many of them because the sounds already exist in English or are quite similar to certain sounds in English. For example, the first consonant in Hindi is K, which is similar to the English letter K. But the next one doesn't exist in English. Yes, this one is K. When you say it without aspiration, you get K. But when you say it with aspiration, it becomes K. Interesting, but let me first explain what aspirated and unaspirated sounds are. In very simple words, we can say that aspirated sounds are spoken with a burst of air and an unaspirated sound isn't. For example, the sound of the letter H in the English word 
hat. Saying this sound involves a forceful expulsion of air. Try it yourself. Ha. Ha. In Hindi, when you say k, there is no forceful expulsion of air. But when you say k, you will feel yourself expelling the air from your mouth. Try it yourself and see the difference. K, k. Next, let's take a look at g, which is the same as the sound of the letter g in the English word game. Yes, when you say g without aspiration, you get g. But when you say it with aspiration, you get g. Yes, that's the next consonant. It works the same way for some other consonants too. Yes. Like ch is the same as the ch in the English word chain, without aspiration. When you say ch with aspiration, it becomes ch. Similarly, we have j and j, t and th, d and dh, t and th, d and dh, p and p. B and B. But what about the other consonants? Definitely, that doesn't complete our list of consonant sounds. Now, let's take a look at some of the other consonants and how they sound. Let's first take a look at the consonant H. It sounds like the letter H in the English word hug. We also have Y, which is like the sound of the letter Y in the English word yak. There are two letters that sound like the SH in the English word share. Yes, these are SH and SH. They sound the same when spoken. We will use the small letter S to denote them both from now on. We also have a sound that is similar to the English letter S like in the word sun. This is Sir, this one is Sir, and we will use the capital S from now on when we refer to it. Okay, what's next? We also have N. N is just the sound of the English letter N. R is the same as the sound of the letter R in rat. L is the same as the sound of the letter L in lamb. M is the same as the sound of the letter M in Mars. V is the same as the sound of the letter W in work. Are there any other consonants in Hindi that we haven't discussed? We also have N. This may seem to be a difficult sound as it doesn't exist in English. Just try saying N but roll back your tongue slightly. N. But aren't we still missing two consonants? Yes, we are. We also have N and N. But we don't have to worry much about them since they aren't used alone ever. So, now that we've taken a look at the consonants, how about we take a quick look at the vowels too? The Hindi vowels are known as swar. There are 11 main vowels in Hindi and most of them are the same as in English. For example, a uh, is like the sound of the letter A in the English word apply. A uh, is like the sound of the letter A in the word father. E is like the letter I in tin. E is like the letters E, E in C. Then we have U, which is like the letter U in put. And O is like the sound of the letters O O in room. A is like the A in May. A is like the sound of the letter A in hat. We also have O and O. O sounds like the O in box. And O sounds like the letters A W in sa. We also have another vowel which is RI, something like the RI in riddle. 
we actually learned a word in the last lesson which uses re kripya which means please indeed so how are vowels used in hindi hindi vowels can be used alone or in the form of a matra or vowel signs where it modifies a consonant a good example where both the forms can be used in a single word is the hindi word acha meaning good or okay acha a the first letter a is a standalone form of the vowel a cha but if you see the matra at the end after the letter ch the vowel a here is modifying the consonant ch this means that the sound now becomes ch plus a cha let's see how the vowels modify the consonant k it can become ka ki ki ku ku ke ke ko ko that's a lot that we learned about the sounds in hindi it may seem as too much to learn in the beginning but as you continue to practice things will get easier true the best thing to do is practice practice and practice in this lesson we learned that in hindi there are 33 consonants and 11 vowels consonants are called vyanjan in hindi and vowels are called swar the vowels have a standalone version and when they're attached to a consonant they modify its sound so in the word acha the first a is a standalone form of the vowel a but the last vowel a appears in the form of a modifier and turns ch into cha among the consonants we realize that there are forms that are already present in english when we say these consonants without aspiration we get one consonant when we say them with aspiration we get another consonant which generally doesn't exist in english for example k is a consonant and when we say it with aspiration it becomes another consonant kh we just learned the basics of pronunciation in hindi in this lesson and in the next lesson we'll learn the basics of hindi grammar see you in the next lesson bye dhanyawad and namaste Welcome to Introduction to Hindi. My name is Alicia and I'm joined by Hi everyone. I'm Venus. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Hindi grammar. Did you know that Hindi doesn't use articles? Really? That means you don't have to worry about where to put a and where to add an and where to use the? Yes. Doesn't that make things easier? It definitely does. What about gender? How is it indicated in Hindi? Firstly, there is no he or she in Hindi. You can use the same pronoun for both genders. Great. But the verbs do change depending on the gender of the person speaking and the gender of the person you are speaking to. Oh, that is quite complicated. Not really. It is usually quite simple. If a verb uses e at the end it means it is feminine but if it uses a at the end it means it is masculine we will go through a few examples later in this lesson to find out just how easy it is also in hindi there is no neutral gender every object is either masculine or feminine yes so an auto rickshaw is masculine and a bus is feminine but there isn't a need to worry about getting the gender of all objects correct in the beginning this is something you'll catch on to as you go on learning hindi how about we look at an example of verbs and how they change based on gender let's begin with the verb to do sure in hindi to do is karna if you are female you would say karti and if you are male you would say karta So the last vowel changes it is e for females and a 
for males. Yes, the same goes when you address someone. If they are female, use e at the end of the verb, and if they are male, use a at the end. Okay, so we don't have to worry about articles. We don't have to worry about pronouns being gender based, but we have to be concerned about verbs being based on gender. Yes, that's right. How about we go on and take a look at some personal pronouns now? In Hindi, the first person singular pronoun is me. And it doesn't matter whether you're female or male. You can use the same pronoun. Yes, the first person plural pronoun is hum. While there's only one first person singular pronoun in Hindi, there are three second person singular pronouns, right? Yes, they are tu, tum, and aap. Tu is used in a very informal way, something you will use with a very close friend. Tum is also informal, but not as much as tu. It is something you may want to use with a friend, a close colleague, your kids, your siblings, or even your spouse. But aap is the formal form of address. It is something that you would like to use at your office while addressing your parents, strangers, or your elders. The interesting thing is that you can use tum and aap as the second person plural too. But generally, a word like all or people is added to tum and aap to make the second person plural. So, you could say tum log or aap log, where log means people or you could say tum sab or aap sab where sab means all good so we learned two more words here for people and all yes log means people and sab means all let's check the third person singular now for he she it this we use ye and for he she it that we use ve the plural will be ye for these and ve for those. So, how about we try and make some sentences now? Sure, we can. But before we actually go on to forming sentences, we will need to know a little more about the various forms of the verb to be. Of course, to be is an important verb not only in Hindi but also in English. Without knowing about how to use it, it's very difficult to form sentences. Imagine having no am, are, were, was, have, or has in English. There would be no sentences. So, what is to be in Hindi? It is hona. How would we say I am in Hindi? For I am, hona changes to hu. Me, hu. We are becomes hum. Hum hai where hona changes to hai. With tu, you use hai, and tum, you use ho, and with aap, you use hai. That means the to be form is the same for plural and for respectful address. Yes, it is hai. Does it change depending on whether a man speaks or a woman? No, it doesn't. We have three versions of hona. And these are who, he, he. Great! So now we can make a sentence. Definitely. How would you say, I am Alicia? That would be, Me Alicia Hu. So, the order of the words is, I Alicia am, or pronoun, noun, verb. That means, unlike English, the noun comes before the verb in Hindi. Yes, indeed. Let's try out a few more sentences. How about, I am good? How would we say that in Hindi? Main acha hu, if you are male. Main achi hu, if you are female. Did you notice how for males the word good becomes acha and for females it becomes achi? Yes, indeed. What about the plural version of the Hindi word for good? That would be achhe. This would also be used 
if you are using a respectful address for a mail aap acche hain generally the respectful form when addressing mails is the same as the plural version that makes things quite simple but good is an adjective does that mean that all adjectives also change depending on the gender not always but sometimes they do you will pick this up as you practice the language more and more okay but what about past tense was becomes tha or the or thi so how would you say how are you aap kaise hain or aap kaisi hain and how would you answer that main acha hu if you are male or main achhi hu if you are female wow we learned a lot about hindi grammar today let's recap what we've learned in this lesson in this lesson we learned that there are no articles in hindi the pronouns are not gender based but the verbs are never neutral they're always masculine or feminine we also learned that you can use three variations of the word you depending on whether you want to use a formal informal or a little more informal version We also learned how the verb to be changes depending on whether the sentence is singular, plural, formal or informal. And of course, we also learned how to say how are you and how to answer this very important question. We just learned the basics of Hindi grammar. In the next lesson, we'll learn the basics of Hindi writing. See you in the next lesson. Bye. Dhanyawad and namaste. Welcome to Introduction to Hindi. My name is Alicia and I'm joined by Hi everyone. I'm Venus. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Hindi writing. To begin with, Hindi is written in Devanagari script. Is it written from right to left or left to right? Hindi is written from left to right, just like English. There is another interesting thing about Hindi. which is different from english what is that hindi is a phonetic language this means that it is written as it is spoken in english some of the spellings can be quite confusing for a learner for example the sound of the letter c in city is the same as the sound of the letter s in sit at the same time the sound of the letter c in city is different from the sound of the letter c in cup for someone who knows english this isn't a difficult thing but if you're learning the language this can be confusing indeed while reading and writing but in hindi you don't have to worry about these things if the sound is ka you write k if the sound is ku you write ku this makes it quite easy to learn the script doesn't it Yes, once you know the consonant and vowels, you can easily begin to read the script. What about the punctuation marks? Are they different from English? In Hindi, we use the same punctuation marks as in English. This means you use the same commas and question marks. So, nothing to worry about. However, the Hindi full stop is different from the English full stop. Really? How do we make the Hindi full stop? It appears like a vertical or standing line at the end of the sentence and is called a purna viram. Take this sentence for example written in Hindi script main theek hu. Notice the vertical line at the end of the sentence. This is the Hindi full stop. This one seems quite easy to make too. Yes, indeed. So, how about we go on to how the Hindi alphabets are written? In a previous lesson, we learned that Hindi has 33 consonants and 11 vowels. You are absolutely correct. And we also learned most of the consonants during our pronunciation lesson. How about we take a quick look at them and then go on to see how vowels modify the sounds of these consonants? Sure. Here they are. 
क ख ग घ न च छ ज झ न ट ठ ड ढ ण त थ द ध न प फ ब भ म य र ल व श क्ष स ह Okay, great. The best way to learn the script is to practice reading and writing it as much as you can. Yes, indeed. So, how do vowels generally appear in Hindi script? Let's start with how they are written individually. Here they are. A, a, i, i, u, u, e, a, o, o, ri. How do they appear when they're attached to a consonant? Let's take a few words that use these vowels in the form of matras. Work, calm. See the vertical line between the letters k and m. This is the vowel a, and is called a ki matra or matra of a. Whenever you notice this vertical line added to a consonant, you add the vowel a to that consonant. So. K becomes ka. Let's try another. How much? Kitna? See this matra on the letter k. That is called choti e ki matra or e or matra of the small e. Whenever you see this matra on a consonant, add the vowel sound to the consonant and say it. So k becomes ki. Let's look at another word. cat billy see this matra on the letter l this is called the badi e ki matra or e or matra of the big e here l becomes li here's another word dog kutta notice this matra on the letter k this is the choti u ki matra or u or matra of the small u this matra makes k ku let's now look at shoe juta this matra below the letter j is the badi u ki matra or u or matra of the big u this matra makes j ju now let's take apple sab The matra above the letter s is called the choti a ki matra or a or matra of the small a this matra changes s to s let's now take the word for money money paisa the matra above the letter p is called the badi a ki matra or a or matra of the big a this changes p to pa now let's take a look at o and a gold sona the matra on the letter s is called the chote o ki matra or o or matra of the small o this matra changes s to so who kon The matra on the letter k is called the badi u ki matra or o or matra of the big o this matra modifies the sound of k to k the vowel ri appears slightly differently let's take a word we learnt in the first lesson please kripya this matra below the letter k is called the ri ki matra or the matra of ri what else is there that we should know about the hindi script there are two more things you will often notice in the hindi script and that's called the anuswar and the chandra bindu what does that look like the anuswar appears as a dot and the chandra bindu is the moon dot Notice the small dot along with the vowel a in me or i this is the anuswar and when it occurs at the end of the word it nasalizes the vowel
when the dot appears before a letter in the middle of the word it nasalizes the sound of that consonant let's check out the word for color rang here the anu swar makes it sound like the ng in the english word song the chandra bindu is no different than the anu swar and it works very similarly to it by nasalizing the vowel above which it is placed for example clocks ghadiya here the chandra bindu can be seen above the last vowel a in this lesson we learned how the hindi full stop appears and we also came to know that hindi is a phonetic language and is spoken exactly as it's written that makes things quite easy we also learned how the consonants look and how the vowels look individually when they're attached to a consonant and how their nasalized versions appear in written hindi we just learned the basics of hindi writing in the next lesson we'll teach you some basic phrases in hindi see you in the next lesson bye dhanyawad and namaste Welcome to Introduction to Hindi. My name is Alicia and I'm joined by Hi everyone. I'm Venus. In this lesson, we'll focus on teaching you the most useful Hindi words and phrases for absolute beginners. Make sure you are repeating the words out loud after I say the examples. Are you ready? Let's get started. The best phrase to learn when studying a new language is one that expresses gratitude and appreciation. If you had to learn only a single phrase, this would be it. We taught you this phrase in the first lesson of this series. Do you remember what it was? It's Dhanyavad. Repeat it. Dhanyavad. Once more. Dhanyavad. Okay, but how about if we want to say thank you very much? Then you would say aapka bahut dhanyawad let me break this down for you aapka your bahut very dhanyawad thanks aapka bahut dhanyawad you can even say aapka bahut bahut dhanyawad the next phrase we'll teach you is perhaps the second most useful phrase of all it's to apologize or excuse yourself firstly indians often use the english word sorry in their spoken language that's quite a useful bit of information for someone who's traveling to india yes indeed so you can easily use that word too but here is the hindi version of sorry maaf karna maaf karna you can use this phrase to apologize as well as to excuse yourself add the word mujhe and you will get i am sorry repeat after venus mujhe maaf karna once more mujhe maaf karna try again mujhe maaf karna that was quite easy wasn't it let's try both phrases once more thank you very much aapka bahut dhanyawad aapka bahut dhanyawad thank you very very much aapka bahut bahut dhanyawad आपका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद ओके नाउ लेट्स ट्राई आई एम सॉरी फॉर सॉरी वी यूज द वर्ड माफ करना माफ करना माफ करना मुझे माफ करना मुझे माफ करना नाउ यू कैन से थैंक यू वेरी मच एक्सक्यूज मी एंड आई एम सॉरी इन हिंदी लेट्स मूव ऑन Asking where something is is an incredibly important and useful phrase to learn. You're going to need this when asking where the bathroom, the train station, or where the hotel is. But first, let's find out what the Hindi word for where is. The Hindi word for where is kahan. Kahan. How would we say where is the bathroom in Hindi? We would say bathroom kahan hai. You use the English word for bathroom. Yes, indeed. 
That's because Indians often use the English word. But you could also learn the Hindi word for bathroom, which is shochale. Let's try this again. Bathroom kaha hai? Bathroom kaha hai? Shochale kaha hai? Shochale kaha hai? If you notice, the sequence of words here is bathroom, bathroom, where, kaha, is, hai. Does that sequence work with most things? For example, asking for the bus or train station? Yes. Just put what you are looking for first, follow it up with kaha, and then add hai. Okay, let's try this again. Bathroom kaha hai? Bathroom kaha hai? How about we learn some of the common words you may need to ask for while moving around in India? Well, let me first tell you about the English words you can easily use. That would be great. Hotel, train station, bus stop, taxi, metro station, museum. How would you say shop? Shop is also commonly understood by Indians, but you could ask for dukan. For example, if you want to ask for a pharmacy or more commonly known as a chemist shop in India, you could say dawai ki dukan kaha hai. How about we try that again? Dawa ki dukan kaha hai? Once more. Dawa ki dukan kaha hai? In this lesson, you learned how to say thank you, thank you very much, sorry, and I'm sorry. You also learned how to ask where something is. Throughout this Hindi introduction guide series, you learn about the alphabets, the script, the basics of Hindi grammar and pronunciation. Let's conclude with some parting advice from Venus and listen to some of her tips on how to learn Hindi from a native Hindi perspective. Whenever you learn a new language, the best way to get better at it is to practice and practice. This applies to Hindi too. One of the best ways to learn spoken Hindi is to watch Hindi movies and TV shows. This helps you learn Hindi words and sentences quickly and easily. Practice pronouncing some of the easier words first and then you can go on to some of the difficult words as well. Learn to read Hindi by spending time studying some newspapers or magazines written in the language. If you spend just an hour a day or even 30 minutes a day learning Hindi, within a month you can become quite fluent in it. Good luck as you continue learning Hindi and we'll see you in another video. Bye! Dhanyabad and Namaste! Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.